Forza Motorsport is a masterpiece. Racing down the track in torrential rain at a solid 60 FPS is pretty amazing. I had to do a side-by-side -side comparison with Gran Turismo 7 on PS5 to really appreciate how good this game looks. Just look at this, I mean wow. GT7 looks like a mobile game compared to Forza Motorsport. I've spent hours playing this game the last few days and it's not only the best looking racing simulator ever, it plays like one as well. The cars handle and sound great, the gameplay is a lot of fun. Between the series S and X, the gameplay experience is in fact identical. If you're in an online race with someone playing on the weaker series S will not really give you a disadvantage. The main difference between the two is really the visuals and graphics, where the series X is of course superior, but there are a few other subtle differences and some things are surprisingly better on the series S. Yeah, I mean better on the series S, you'll see. If you're thinking about buying a new Xbox and still deciding between the Series S and X, then this should be useful. Is it worth it to spend the extra money on a Series X? Let's start with the game size. On Series S, the game's about 99 gigabytes, while on the Series X, it's larger, 133 gigabytes. The difference here is because of the high resolution track textures, which are only available and installed on the Series X. Loading times are also different, and some of you might be surprised by the results here. Going from dashboard to the main menu took 30 seconds on the Series S and 33 seconds on the X. Starting a race and actually getting behind the wheel is faster on the Series S as well, taking 20 seconds on the little console versus 31 seconds on the Series X. Xbox also has quick resume which is a great feature if you play offline endurance races. This allows you to leave and come back midway through the race. Series S is faster yet again, taking 10 seconds for quick resume versus 14 seconds on Series X. So Series S beats out the X in all three loading tests. How is a cheaper console faster? Well it's because the Series S has to load lower resolution assets. Remember how it's missing the high resolution track textures. The Series S also has a different smaller SSD, perhaps that's a little faster. Now where the Series X has a huge advantage are the graphics and visuals. There's two graphic modes on the Series S, performance and visuals. Performance is 1080p resolution and target 60 FPS. The visuals or quality mode is 1440p resolution and targets 30 FPS. The more powerful Series X actually has three graphic modes. There's still performance mode, which now runs at 4K native and still targets 60 FPS. The visuals or quality mode is 4K with ray tracing, but lowers the frame rate to 30 FPS. And then there's a third option on the Series X, which is performance ray tracing. This targets 60 FPS with ray tracing, but the resolution is dynamic. It likely hovers between 1440p and 1800p from what I tested. Comparing the two consoles here, you can see the huge difference in performance mode. I mean 4K 60 FPS on the Series X just looks a lot better and crisp compared to the 1080p resolution on the Series S. Visual mode also has quite a difference between the two consoles. I mean you do need to zoom in to see the difference between 1440p on the Series S and 4K on the X. But the obvious difference here is the ray tracing. It makes the lighting look a lot more realistic on the Series X. Especially inside of the car in cockpit camera, the difference is clear. Even the 60 FPS performance ray tracing mode on Series X looks better and more crisp compared to the 30 FPS visuals mode on the Series S. Now all these graphic mode selections, it's for the on-track gameplay only. So even when you select performance mode, the cutscenes before and after the race default to the 30 FPS visual or quality mode on both consoles. So at the start of a race, you'll clearly see the transition where it jumps from 30 FPS to 60 FPS even in performance mode. Speaking of performance, it's solid. I have up on the screen side by side gameplay on both consoles in performance mode. FPS counter is locked here to a solid 60 FPS. No issues whatsoever, turn 10 really released a polished game. Even the 30 FPS visuals mode here has no issues. Side by side gameplay with FPS counter is shown now and you can see the solid performance on both the Series S and X. The performance ray tracing mode on Series X also performs well. 
a solid 60 FPS without any drops or issues. I tested this in a few situations, few weather conditions, and it's perfect regardless of what you throw at it. So are there any cracks in the armor at all? Or is this game flawless? Well, I had to look really hard, but I found two issues, both of them on the Series X. The first one here is a bit of a performance issue and screen tearing in the 30 FPS visuals mode. Here when I'm in the cockpit camera in this race, you can see a little bit of screen tearing and some drops to 28 FPS. The second issue is also in visuals mode on the Series X and it seems to be an issue with the ray tracing feature. Here I have some side by side comparison in all three graphic modes. Watch the rear window on this Camaro ZL1. See that? Some sort of visual graphic bugs right there. And that was really it. For me personally, these are minor and can easily be addressed by a small patch. So there you have it, Forza Motorsport on Xbox Series S versus Series X. For me personally, I think Series S does really well here. I mean, it's 60 FPS, that's the most important thing. However, if you like to play on a large 4K TV and love good graphics, then Series X does look a lot, lot better. I mean, 60 FPS with ray tracing and close to 4K resolution, there's not many console games, both on the Series X or PS5, that can do that. For the rest of the video, I have some more gameplay side-by-side -side with the FPS counter shown on both consoles, so check that out.